Hi everyone, Mr. Neighbor here, and today we're going to talk about acceleration. So we define acceleration as follows. It's a measure of how quickly velocity changes. So that means you're either speeding up or slowing down. Um, it also means, because it's a velocity changing thing, that if your direction changes ever, technically you're accelerating. And we'll look at a few examples in different videos about what that means. Um, so acceleration, it's a change in your velocity. So velocity is changing in an interval of time. So change in V over change in T, which is the same thing as taking your final velocity minus your initial divided by your final time minus your initial time. When we have our acceleration come out, we do have labels of meters per second squared is what we're most commonly used to. So think about what that actually means, meters per second squared, or sometimes people write it as meters per second per second. So you're taking a velocity divided by a time. So every second that passes, your velocity is changing this much. So just keep that in mind. We'll work on that as we continue through some examples. So first, the data table below is for a car that accelerated from rest. So what is the velocity of the car? So the velocity I see at time one is 10 miles an hour. At time two seconds, it's 20 miles an hour. So what is the velocity of a car? That's kind of a trick question. The velocity is changing. There is no single velocity of the car. We could find an average velocity by adding up um, all of these and then dividing by how many we have, uh, but that doesn't give us what the velocity is. So a little bit of a trick question there. Uh, what is it called when the velocity changes over time? That is called acceleration. So um, we talked about a, I'm pointing to the screen that you can see me point, um, but we talked about a label of meters per second per second or meters per second squared, which we normally use in SI units. However, it doesn't have to be that. Uh, for this example, when we calculate acceleration, it would be in miles per hour per second. So every second that passes, our velocity is changing that many miles per hour. So it's ask asking us to calculate that. So to calculate it, we take a change in velocity over a change in time. And we don't it doesn't matter which interval we look at. We can look at um, this interval from zero to one second. We could look at it from uh, two to three seconds. If it's a constant acceleration, it doesn't matter what interval you're gonna be dealing with, which is what we're gonna be dealing with, constant accelerations for this moment. So let's do that. Let's just look at 10 miles an hour to zero miles an hour. So the final is 10, and we're gonna subtract zero. And we're going to divide by our change in time, which is one second. So when I calculate that out, 10 minus zero, I will get out 10 miles per hour per second. So every second that passes, my velocity is increasing 10 miles an hour. So the speedometer is going up 10 miles an hour every second that passes. All right, another practice problem. A roller coaster's velocity at the top of the hill is 10 meters per second. Two seconds later, it reaches the bottom of the hill with a velocity of 26 meters per second. What was the acceleration of the coaster? So remember, acceleration, average acceleration, is calculated by a change in velocity over change in time. So let's think about how much did the velocity change right here? Well, it changed by 16 meters per second. The final would be 26, the initial would be 10, so we get out a positive 16. We're dividing that by the time. So that change happened in two seconds. So when we calculate this out, we'll get out eight as our magnitude, and meters per second divided by a second will give us out meters per second divided by another second, or you could just say eight meters per second squared is what people commonly do. And sig figs for this would be only one because we are using division. Uh, the 10 only has one, the 26 has two, so our answer will only have one sig fig, so that would be correct. All right. So we can look at it 
acceleration in another way. Uh, what happens if the acceleration of an object is 10 meters per second per second or 10 meters per second squared? If it starts from rest, this object, how fast is it moving at the end of each second? So let's fill in this chart. All right, so at zero seconds, if it's starting at rest, that means the object will not be traveling at all. It will be going at zero meters per second. One second later, it will have gained 10 meters per second. The next second later, it's going to gain another 10 meters per second because the acceleration means for every one second, I'm going to change oops, 10 meters per second. When you divide those, that's what this means. So another 10 meters per second is going to be added on, which would give us 20 meters per second. And then another second later, your velocity is going to change by another 10 and another 10. So every second that goes by, you're adding 10 meters per second to the velocity. All right, so sometimes we're given the acceleration and we want to know the velocity of the moving object after a certain amount of time has passed. In that case, we can rearrange the formula that we know to find what the final velocity will be. So for example, we start with the average acceleration, which we know to calculate as a change in velocity over a change in time, otherwise broken down by the final velocity minus the initial over the, divided by the final time minus the initial time. Really time, that is just how much has passed. So a lot of times we'll just write it as t. Um, you could write it as delta t still. It doesn't really matter, but often we just write it as t. And now we can move things around. If we want to solve for vf, I can multiply the t to the other side. So it's right next to the a, right next to the a. And then I can add the v sub i, initial velocity, to the other side. And what I get out is a vf equation. Um, when I were to, if I were to do that over here, it would kind of look a little backwards. It would look like this. But remember, uh, an equal sign doesn't matter. You can flip things around. So all that stuff moved to the other side through algebra, and we're left with vf equals a times t plus v sub i. So this formula we will use often. Um, but you don't really need it. You only need the same one we started with. So just remember that. You can fill in the blanks here and then solve for VF in this equation as well. All right, a few examples with this type of formula. So a car is traveling at 25 meters per second, accelerates at 3.0 meters per second squared for five seconds. How fast is it traveling at the end of the five seconds? So if we were looking for our final velocity, this is the quicker equation to use, although you could use this one. So we're going to use VF. So VF equals, what do I know? So I know the initial velocity is 25 meters per second. I know that it is accelerating at 3 meters per second squared for a time of 5 seconds. So this right here, this is calculating how much my velocity is changing, the acceleration part. So when I go ahead and calculate that, I'll still have the 25 sitting, he sitting here, plus 15. All right, a quick note. When you multiply a second thing by a meters per second thing, what happens is a cancellation. So this is meters per second per meter per second. Oops, and we're multiplying that by seconds, which is really like seconds over one. So this will cancel with that, and I'm just left with a meters per second answer, hence why this is meters per second right here. So this is the acceleration. This is my initial, and it looks like just add those together because my units are actually the same. So let's go ahead and do that. So my final answer would be, oops, 40 meters per second squared. And it will have a decimal point here because there will be two significant figures in this answer.